So here we are in part two of this video where we have been talking about using web services or APIs to access data, either our own data on another server or um, data that is from like an external third party API. We've been talking about this uh, movies API where we can search for movies. And we set up this little one page app where we can search for a particular movie and um, get basic information about it and get pictures and things like that. So this is where we left off. And so what I wanna do is I wanna make it so when we click on one of these particular movies from the list, we open another page where we can add some additional details about that movie. So let's go ahead and add our new page. So we'll come up here to the pages section. We'll click add page, just a blank page. And I like to name my pages so that I don't get them confused. So that first page, or, or the home page, as you might want to call it, I'm going to call this movie search. And then the second page, I'm going to call movie details. Okay, so on the movie details page, um, let's display some particular information and I'm gonna use that nice card, if I can find it, because it already has kind of a bunch of controls all built in. Okay, so up top here, instead of the avatar style, I'm just gonna use a regular, um, but instead of it saying item, which isn't very nice, we are gonna have it say the movie title. So, template tag, movie.original title. Now remember, you can always go look up in the API, you know, what things are named. Okay, we have an image we can work with, so we're gonna switch to text input. And in the list, the previous page that we did, I showed you how you can use that image source um, to get those nice thumbnail images. These ones are 500 by 500. They have a couple of different ones that you can work with um, that are all based on size. So that's that movie poster path. So this is basically the same that we used over here in the search to get those nice thumbnail images. Uh, we're just using a different size format and that again comes from the API documentation. So we'll get that image to show up in there. They've got some information in here about votes. And so let's set up some template tag uh, information. So let's say average vote is uh, movie.vote average. So we'll be able to display that. And then instead of play song down here, let's get rid of the icon. Oops, I'm gonna change the type to regular. You can leave the color if you want. You can always change the color here under theme. Uh, but I'm gonna change this to movie.release date. And then I'm gonna add a paragraph underneath the card. And I'm gonna add in the template tag for movie.overview, which is like a little synopsis of the movie. So whatever additional information that you would want, you can put on this page. So what we're gonna do at this point is we need to pass over the information and make this clickable for our item on the search page. So as the user um, types into the search box and then details fill in for our list down here. When they click on the list item, we want to then take them over to this other page. And that that part at least is, is easy. Um, but remember we've talked before about these uh, directives for when we're switching pages. So come back over to the details page and up here at the top, these route parameters. So we're gonna need to know the ID of the movie that we want, um, that we're gonna show additional details for, because the movie details page is only handling one specific movie. And they all have IDs, you can go see that in the documentation. 
But if we, let's say we want a movie ID um, as one of our route parameters. So when someone comes to this page, this movie details page, they have to give us the movie ID or we don't know which movie details they want. So we add this to our route parameters here. We come back over to the search page, click on our list item, and then up here under the link section, we're going to say link to our movie details page, which is page two, and then it's going to say, I'm expecting this movie ID. What are you going to pass me? So we're going to pass in the movie.id of the particular movie, because remember, all of this information is for the particular movie, movie in movies, that we're dealing with in the list. So that part by itself works fairly well. However, if you test it right now, uh, it doesn't work the way that we expect. So like I can look for a movie, now I can click on it, and it takes me to the movie details page, but it doesn't actually pull in the information because that list that we have been using of movies, it doesn't persist. So the detail page doesn't have access to the list that was created on the search page. So we, th this was part of the reason why um, let's come down to our code. This is part of the reason why I set this um, app factory for movies up in a separate file so that we could access it from multiple pages. So let's come over to our movie details page in the code. Now we don't have to do anything real strenuous here. We just need to find the movie from the ID that we have on the list that we already have uh, kind of in that cached data and then we need to pull that out and put that in scope.movie. So we have to make sure that we have our dependency. So add that to our function dependencies up here. And so we're going to do movies.find state params. Remember, state params is how we get information out when we've moved it from a different page. Movie ID. Set up our function, getting back a movie. And when we get that movie back, we're going to set it up in scope.movie. And that's it. That's all we have to do. So now we can search through that list in our movies uh, little factory here, the separate module we set up, find the movie we want based on the ID we've passed over, grab that specific movie, put it in scope.movie so that we can then access it. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong UI, so that we can then access it with all of this specific data that we want. So now we can test and make sure that works, save everything. So to test, we can then type in the name of a movie, click on it, and voila, we're getting the title, we're getting a nice looking poster, the average vote, uh, the date released, and a nice little synopsis down here at the bottom. So if you are having any trouble accessing your web service, uh, feel free to leave a comment. But like I said in the first video, there's a lot of good web services out there that you can use to build different apps. Of course, you can always use your own web service and build your own web service so that your app can then access that. That's always handy too. Uh, but I hope this has been useful in thinking about um, how you would use a web service and, and the actual word is consume a web service with your app. Uh, using Ionic. So I'll see you next time.